When I say the word salvation, what comes to mind for you? What's the picture or the theological framework that comes to mind for you? Uh, the word salvation is a very religious term. And I think for the average Christian, if you say the word salvation, they'll probably think along the lines of uh, escaping hell and entering heaven one day. So essentially, it's this bus ticket to heaven that we get one day. Now, what if I told you that salvation is, is not less than that? but it is far more, it's such a fuller concept um, than what we sometimes make it out to be. We see salvation is this idea of, of healing, restoring, and uh, God is not only restoring certain parts of us for a certain time frame in the future. God wants to restore and save every single part of you, and it is a work that has been finished, and it is a work that is busy continuing today in your everyday life. And it is also a work that we look forward to. So salvation, we can say, and I've got a little uh, table that I want to share with you on the screen just to try and illustrate this. But salvation comes to us in three time frames. So the first time frame that we can consider salvation, which we spoke about in week one, is uh, this idea of having been saved. This is the idea that, that the salvation that we experience in the person of Jesus is something that has been finished. If you put your faith in Jesus, um, your salvation, your position before God, your identity in Christ has been settled. You are a child of God and nothing can change that if you've put your faith in Jesus. And so it's this idea of a past tense reality. Uh, theologically, the word that gets used is the word justification, um, or that we are the righteousness of Christ. Um, and we like to use this word of identity. Your identity has changed. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 17 says that the, if you are in Christ Jesus, you are a new creation. The old has gone and the new has come. So your identity has been transferred uh, from being a stranger to being a child of God. Um, and then this is also a work that renews your spirit. Uh, if you are in Christ Jesus, your spirit has been made alive from death to life. Um, and uh, it's this idea of who I have already become in the person of Jesus. Now, this week, what we want to focus on a little bit more is the second time frame. I'm going to just quickly mention all three of them. The second time frame is this idea of being saved. That now that we are children of God, God is continuing a process with us, making us more and more like him. He is saving us from who we were to who Christ is, saving us from ourselves each and every day. And so uh, this is the time frame of the present continuous that starts the day when you start serving uh, Jesus and as a disciple start following him. And it continues until the day that you die, we become more and more like Jesus. So it's present continuous tense. And theologically, this is the word sanctification. Um, and uh, we like using the word maturity. Now that you are a child, because of faith, a child in the household of God, God calls us to become mature, to become adults like him. Um, and uh, this is a work of aligning the soul. And so in as much as your spirit was dead and has been made alive, your spirit, your soul is sort of catching up to the salvation that you've already experienced, which means your thoughts are being renewed and aligned to your new identity. Not only your thoughts, but your um, emotions are being aligned to your new identity each and every day as you walk with Jesus. And also your behavior, the, the people can start seeing that your a new, new identity on the outside is aligned with what has happened on the inside. And so it's alignment of the soul that takes place. And this is becoming more and more like Christ. The third time frame, which we'll be focusing on next week, is this idea of we will be saved. There is a salvation waiting for us, and that is the hope that we have, that we will be raised with Christ and, and, and new resurrected bodies. And um, this is a work that, you know, focuses in on the body. Just because I am a Christian uh, does not mean that I will not lose the hair on my head. Um, and we know that this is the salvation we are waiting for one day um, where we will be raised to incorruptibility with Christ. And so this is in the future tense, and we like using the term eternity, um, our eternal salvation, or the word glorification is the theological term for that. Now, if we consider this second time frame, this idea of that we are being saved and being aligned to our new identity, uh, becoming more and more like Christ. Uh, here's a question I want to ask to you. 
how does this happen? Is this, this, this work of sanctification or maturity becoming more and more like Christ? Um, is this a work primarily from God that God does in our lives? Or is it a work that we do um, and that we participate in? Well, the answer is yes, it's both. Uh, Dallas Willard speaks about this idea that our discipleship, our walk with Jesus, there is an active side to it and a passive side to it. There's a part that only God does and can do. And he initiates all of those movements, making us more and more like Christ, forming Christ in us. But at the same time, we respond. There's also an active participation in your discipleship journey with Jesus and in your maturing uh, with becoming more and more like Jesus. There is an active part. There's a part that you get to do in aligning yourself with your new identity. Now, let's look at um, 2 Corinthians 3 verse 18 explains a bit about this. And it says, we all with unveiled face, and it just speaks about this idea of in, in the old covenant, uh, there was a, a separation between the people and God. It's only Moses that could see God face to face. But now because of the work of Christ, all of us, the veil has been taken away and we can see God clearly. The distance has been canceled. We get to behold the glory of God. And so that's the, the good news of the gospel. So with unveiled face, beholding the glory of the Lord, are being transformed. We are being, it's this present continuous tense. I don't know if you remember your English teacher teaching you present continuous tense. We are being transformed into the same degree of glory or the same image from one degree of glory to another. So it's like this oven being turned on from one degree to another. We are being made more and more like Christ. And then it ends off by saying, for this comes from the Lord who is the Spirit. And so although this is a work of God, we are also actively beholding. And as we behold God, we become more and more like Him. And, and I love this picture of beholding because it takes the pressure off on, on you having to have this to-do list. It's really as simple as just beholding who God is. And as you look to who he is, it's as if you are seeing into a mirror, seeing who you are because you are now the righteousness of Christ. You are beholding what you're supposed to become like and who you already are in Christ Jesus. And it's a very simple invitation that God makes to us saying, just, just behold me, just look at me because you will become what you behold. John 15, and in 1 John, it uses this term quite a lot, uh, abide. Jesus says, abide in me, because if you abide in me, you will bear much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. And abide is the verb for the word abode, which means home. So, so he's saying actively home in me, and then you'll bear much fruit. So if you want to become mature and become more and more like Jesus, behold him, abide in him. It's as simple as that. Now, having said this, 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 this idea of, of being formed into the image and likeness of Jesus, uh, even Paul, he writes in Galatians 4 verse 19, he says, My little children, for I am in the, again in the anguish of childbirth until Christ is formed in you. And so, so the aim is that who you are and who Christ is become so infused with one another that when I poke you, the reaction that comes out is Christ. Christ-like, because he is so formed in who you are. You have been aligned with your true identity in Christ Jesus. Now, being deliberate about this, what, what can you do? What is the response that God invites us to do? You can actively behold. You can be deliberate about who and what you behold in this life. Um, I believe that you become what you behold. That which you give your attention to is what you will become. Uh, that, that everything around us has got a forming effect on us. And so, but we can choose what we look at and what we give our attention to. And there are three areas that primarily forms any human being. Firstly, it's the information that you take in. So my question is, the information that you take in, is it forming Christ in you? Is it making you more like Jesus or not? If it is, then give your attention to that. If it's not, then cut it out of your life. Uh, the second thing that forms us is the habits. We don't only form habits, but we know that habits form us. And what habits do you have in place? Uh, maybe you've got certain habits that are 
taking your attention away from Christ. It's, it's not helping you to behold Christ. Cut those habits out of your life. But also put habits in place that helps you to behold. So for example, having a quiet time, reading your Bible, having a habit of prayer, is a habit of beholding and abiding in Christ. And that will form Christ in you and mature you in him. The third thing that forms people, it's relationships. And you can be deliberate in your relationships. Is the relationships that you have, is it forming and helping you to behold Christ or not? Um, if there are toxic relationships, then maybe you know, say no to those kind of relationships and give more attention and time to relationships that forms Christ in you. And that, this is why I'm so passionate about church. Um, that's the place where you can form those relationships where other people are seeking, trying to actively behold Christ. If you surround yourself with those kind of people, Christ will be formed in you. You're going to become more and more like Jesus. And so just before I end off, I um, just want to remind us, it is so important um, in this process of maturity and becoming more and more like Christ that God calls us to, that we don't confuse this with our position or our identity in Christ Jesus. You see, the reason why we do good works is not in order to gain an identity or a position before God. The reason we do Christ-like works is because we are children of God. We don't do good works in order to become children of God. We do good works because we are children of God and we want to work and live in the same way as our Father does. Now, I want to just end off with this a challenge to you is to ask you, how is it going with your abiding and your beholding? I'm going to encourage you to be deliberate with what you behold, because what you behold will determine who you become. Bless you. If this content has been helpful to you, I want to encourage you to just share it with some friends and also like and subscribe to this channel. And this will help us to reach a wider audience.